Hello, everyone. Thank you so very much again for tuning in to 2017 Taking Back Your Life. And we call this series of this year uh, business. Um, what do we call it? Yeah, that's it. Business takeover. I know. I know it's it's late. <sighs> but anyway, again, I have a phenomenal guest planned for you. Um, if you guys got a chance to check out Trevor Ott's last uh, week, he gave us some great information, some real nuggets, some jewels. And um, I promise you we're going to have the same thing today. So our guest today is a national speaker and strategic brand director. She's the chief brand architect of 360 Gateway Brand, where she specializes in the development of brand identi uh, identity, strategy, and execution. Please join me in welcoming Miss Alicia Reese. Hello. Uh, hi, everyone. How hey. are you? Well, hey, I'm thanks excellent. so much. Say that again. I'm excellent. That's always a good thing. Obviously, I'm starting off on a bit of a, a, a minor traffic violation here, but I'm getting it together. Uh, so uh, that's what happens when you get a radio guy on video, right? We spaz out when we see ourselves. But uh, I want to talk to you, and I wanted to have you on, on specifically on this because I know you've done a lot of work in branding uh, in all facets of that. And you've been an entrepreneur, if I remember your story, since you were a child. Not that you're like 50 yeah. or 60 right now, but that's certainly <laughs> been more than a couple years. Yeah, just a few, just a few. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start off with the, the very obvious, because I always like to, everyone's got a different terminology for it, um, but I'd love to hear your outtake. What is your description or definition of branding? So my definition of branding, it's the essence of who you are, the product or service you offer, and everything people feel when they come in contact with that product or service. Why do you think so many people get branding wrong? Because too many people get distracted by all of the noise that's going on outside of them. And that's, you know, human nature. I get it, especially in such a digital world. You're looking at, oh, well, this person uses this color and this person uses that design or this person does this. So maybe if I add this to mine, it'll make mine better. And then you lose sight of who you are and what your product or service is. So it makes it very confusing. And so your branding is just off. It feels off, it looks off, and it's just off. So you're a believer that if, you're, if, if your branding isn't clicking with the audience, it's intended for, you can you sense that, you know it deep down inside, right? It's not like a shock if someone called you up and said it sucks. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's happened to me too. Uh, someone connected with me and they were like, so what is it that you do? And it was more than one person and they were just super confused. And I'm like, okay, that means my branding is off. If someone can't look at you or look at your product or service and say, okay, you do this or you do that, or you provide this or provide that, then your branding is off and you need to make some changes. So every time I've started a business, and God knows I've started many, and many of them <laughs> failed, uh, but I've had some success of late. Um, me personally, I like to, when I think about branding, one of the things I, I'm very keen on is making sure that I do all of the behind the scenes, thought out, strategic planning, or developing in that first before I just toss it out. I see so many people that'll, you know, go get a logo, throw it up, and really don't know what it means to them. Mm. Do you advocate that people should really think that part of it out because it's very hard to go back and change it once it's out there? So I'm a, I'm a firm believer in it's okay to, to not know everything to get started. I do agree with that. However, when it comes to building your brand, you really want to think about initially, what is it that I really want to offer? What is it that I'm actually looking to do? How does it 
in turn make me money? How do I monetize it? How do I speak the language of whoever or whomever my target market is? And I think that's the major thing that people kind of forget when it comes to branding is, is who is my target market? What do I provide to that target market? What is, what is the problem or issue that I'm actually solving? And then now how do I create um, an entity that showcases and displays and highlights all of that and people just forget like they choose colors that make no sense like if you want to be calming <laughs> no really like it's just it's it's fascinating sometimes if they want to be a very calming or they want a very calming atmosphere when people come in touch with their brand but their colors are red like bold red like that's you know it's a little confusing i, I look up whatever right. i work with friends we even look up colors especially if we're starting from the beginning like so what does this color mean does that fit in line with the feeling that you're trying to come across? Like, you know the difference when you walk into a Publix versus a Winn-Dixie. Or if you're up here um, in New York, a Whole Foods versus a Trader Joe's. You instantly know the difference because of how it's branded. There is a feeling that you look to, you know, evoke. And if you don't think about all of that when it comes to building your brand, you get real confused real fast and you spend a whole lot of money real fast because you're confused. And then, and then you have to go back and, 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 and hire someone like you to come in and fix all of that madness. Yeah. And it, it, you know, it can, it can be frustrating for both parties involved because it's like, but this is my baby. And it's like, I know it's your baby, but your baby has a, you know, a few things that we need to work on. Right. Right. Uh, is it easier for you in this kind of personal question, business personal question, is it easier for you to work with people at the very beginning or do you enjoy sifting through the madness and kind of building out of what their foundation and building something that's different and great? So I used to love starting from the beginning. Um, that was one of my first loves and I used to do it on a very micro level. Um, but as I've grown and as I've developed, um, I've come to find that my specialty, honestly, is working with the beginners on a very macro level. Um, like, okay, these are the tools that you need to employ, but you kind of need to be at this point before I come in because it makes my job that much harder because I am a big dreamer. I'm, I think, okay, how do we reach millions? How do we do, like, that's my thing. How do we partner with Fortune 500 companies? How do we do all of this? But it is very, very difficult to get to that level if your foundation is built on sand. Mm. Gotcha. Makes sense. Say no more. Uh, I want to switch gears a little bit on a phrase, uh, phraseology that you use on your website that I absolutely love. And I said, I got to bring this up because I want you to go in deep on this and explain what you mean by this. Um, you say, when, in, when asked what I do, that content is king, strategy is queen, and relationships are the offsprings. And, and obviously, there's a context, a context that you're using that in. Mm -hmm. But um, let's see if we can transpose that for branding. Sure. Uh, I have heard over and over that content is king, but um, and, and I kind of get it. But what does that mean to you? Like, just, I'm not even going to yeah. elaborate, but what does that mean to you? So everyone says you need content, you need content, you need content, you need content. Like you can't survive without content. Um, what people don't understand is, is it has to be content that completely um, articulates who you are and what you do. So if you say you are a branding expert, I'll use that. If you say you're a branding expert, anytime people come to you or anytime you're speaking your content has to be relative to that. Um, you have to be willing to make investments into creating content that draws people to you um, because content is what brings them to look at you. You can market all day long, but if you have nothing to market, your hands are still empty. So your content is what you're putting in your hands in order to market. So whether it's your phrasing, whether it's your books, whether it's um, your worksheets, no matter what it is, you need something for people to come and patronize. And that's what I mean by content. Um, and then you have to decide what your content is, what that looks like for you. If your content um, is a product, what does that product do? 
Does it actually solve a problem? Why would I come to you? Of everyone else that exists, why choose you? And having content, whether it's images, whether it's, like I said, products, whether it's services, whether it's even quotes or wording or fashion tips, whatever it is, what is it that you provide? Your content is your bedrock. That's the foundation of why someone is going to come to you. How do you keep content in this world of social media with all the different platforms? How do you keep content from becoming white noise? So that's when you have to get very, very, very clear on what it is um, that you're looking to provide and what problem you're solving. So when it comes to the creation of content, and that can be a, a real pain point for, especially for creatives, because creatives, hmm. they have all this in their head. And I get it because I'm a creative. There's this and this and this and this, and you literally are going back and forth with a head full of ideas and you want to just throw it all out there to see what sticks. But what, when it comes to creating your content, you have to identify three major things. The first one is, is what problem are you solving? What problem is that? So this is my specialty, yes. But does my specialty solve or answer a problem? Does it, does it solve a problem? Does it provide a solution? That's number one. And then number two, who is my content geared towards? Because you can have the cure to cancer, but again, if, if nobody knows or if you're not speaking a language that your target market understands, it's kind of pointless. And then how is it packaged? So you don't have to be on every social media uh, platform. You just don't. It's, it's, it's sensory overload for you. For <laughs> your, not, it is. It is. You're not supposed to be on every single one. Choose whichever platforms help you get your point, product, or service across the best, and then become a master of those. So those would be my, my three things when it comes to creating content. So let's move to strategy. Obviously, having that, and you mentioned some of that uh, takeaway uh, in your explanation of content. But mm -hmm. to elaborate more, when you think of strategy, um, it is not just, hey, I'm going to put something up on Twitter today. And I'm going to take this really cool picture on Instagram. And then I'm going to say a, a quote in the Bible on Facebook, right? There's, there's no, it's like I'm just doing stuff to do stuff to be relevant, to be seen. Exactly. What you're saying is there has to be a purpose, right, behind everything you put out. Exactly. I'm new. I'm a business owner. I'm good at making widgets. I'm not great at strategies. How do I develop that concept? So for me, strategy, I always start with whatever I want at the end. And some people okay. say, you know, it's difficult for them to think in whole like that. But again, I'm a creative, so we can't help it the way our brains work, the way we're wired. Mm -hmm. um, so I always think of, okay, what do I want the end to look like? And then I literally work my way backwards, understanding that, A, um, the best way to eat an elephant is a piece at a time. So take it literally a piece at a time and I work on it one at a time, but I develop my strategy thinking long range and, and strategy really is honestly just a fancy word to say how I'm going to get there. You don't have to know every step, every avenue, um, every street that you're going to go down, but you do have to have an idea of, I want to work with XYZ person. How do I get in front of that person? Um, I want to be in this particular um, organization. Who's in that organization that can either usher me in or get me in? Um, if I want to have my product in Target or in Walmart, who is it or what are the steps that I need to take in order to get there? Um, so your strategy is, is, okay, I understand that I'm here. I need to get here. What is the shortest distance? And if let's say there is no short distance, that's fine. What is the best way to get me there? Who's already there that I can have as my mentor or that I can intern for, that I can reach out to? Your strategy for me when it comes to actually creating it is sitting down, figuring out who are the people along the way who can help me to get there because no man's an island. You can't do it by yourself. So how will I navigate there? What do I, do I need to have certain certifications? I said, I wanted to work with a certain company. They told me, well, you can't work with us unless you're certified. Okay. Certified is what? Hmm. 
You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what does that look like? So first things first, I've developed my product. I figured out who my target market is. I've packaged it correctly. I know exactly what we're providing. So I have my content. But then my strategy is, is okay, how do I market this to get it in front of the people who I want it to be in? So strategy is just like a marketing plan. How do I get it there? And you can Google it seriously chips me out sometimes are people like, well, I don't know how to do that. I'm like, well, freaking Google it. Like you have Google, right? <laughs> and don't get me wrong. Google is not right a hundred percent of the time, but if you search through enough pages, you get enough, you know, feedback, you can reach out, you know, take a, a class or even call up a government entity or even a company or agency, have a consultation with people who are working in the field. You have options. So to say you don't know something or you're unclear, it's because you don't want to know. And that's cool. It's your choice. Yeah. But it's because you don't want to know. So strategy simply is what your marketing plan is to get your content out. And clearly, if they're listening to this video playback or live, uh, they should be calling you. <laughs> macro, though. Macro, not micro. Yeah. Only the macro people. Micros, <laughs> eh, Google. <laughs> yeah. It's, so, it's, it's so, my life so, much. <laughs> so the triad of all this, is, is, or as you call it, the offspring, is relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, and Correct. I, hey, if it weren't for this part of, of the uh, equation, I would be absolutely lost. This is my one gift uh, that I think I have. I might have others, but I know this is my gift is to, I'm really good at um, creating relationships. Like I understand the work, the value of them. And I, I'm actually one of those people that actually commits, you know, mm -hmm. I don't just have a a relationship like I'll email you once a week just so I can ask you for something. Yeah. I actually get into it, right? I actually yeah. want to be connected. I want to yeah. help you. I want to assist. I want to build something that because I've always been like one of those people. I enjoy if you look at any of the great actors, any of the great singers, they when they get to the top, they always talk about when they see other great singers. Yeah, remember 20 years ago when we were in the basement. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we used to do those seedy things or you hear comedians like, yeah, we were on the circuits. And remember we had to share a McDonald's meal like they grew up in the industry together to get to the top. Mm -hmm. And and I want to be that person that remembers and and you and me, uh, Miss Reese, we remember back in the early, you know, I don't know what the mid 2000 teens when we met. Yeah. And here is 2020 and you're, you know you're on some stage in Brazil and I'm like, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember when, so I <laughs> like those kinds of relationships and stories. Right. Mm -hmm. But many people suck at relationships and, and I'm talking business relationships, yeah. not personal. Yeah. Um, how do you get that person who's uncomfortable reaching out to you and saying, Hey, let's connect, let's do something together. How do you get them to understand that that's a necessary part of the triad? So what people usually don't understand is, is, is when people are seeking to build relationships because it can be tough and it can be awkward, um, they immediately, so they'll meet you at 12 and they're asking you for a favor by one. <laughs> and it's like, but you don't even know me yet. Can I at least eat dinner first before you ask me to marry you? Like, there's a process here. So you're skipping all the steps. So it's just understanding and relaxing in the fact that's why it's so important to know who you are because once you're clear on who you are and you know exactly what you offer, so you've got your content and your product and your service, you figure that part out. You've got your marketing, you know, you kind of know what your strategy is, how you'll grow, what your, what your goals are and things like that. You've got that kind of level set. What happens is people want to connect with you. Lisa Nichols, she said some of, or one of the most important, um, quotes that I, I will remember for the rest of my life. She said, success makes noise. So you don't have to force a relationship. You don't have to force yourself to be in their circle or in there. Success really does make noise. So if you focus on what you do and you focus on making sure that you do it really, really well, those relationships will come, but how you kill it and it instantly turns people off is you shaking my hand at 12 and you're asking me to do something for you at one because it's like, first off, I have to trust you. I don't trust you yet. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Reese, are you there?
think we've lost uh, Miss Reese, but just for a moment, if you're listening live, fear not, she'll be back. I'm sure she just had to come back in, um, and we'll get this thing rolling. Da, da, da. The great thing is it's video, so we can all, oh, there we go. I'm back. Excellent. Sorry, but no, so what I was saying is, is relationships take time. And there's a trust factor there. So you can't shake someone's hand at 12 and then have your hand out at one. It makes yeah. it makes them feel like, so you only want me for what I can offer to you. It takes out the, the feeling of it being genuine. And granted, don't get me wrong, everyone wants to grow. There is absolutely, positively nothing wrong with wanting to grow. But you have to understand is, is the reason I'm not ready to jump gung-ho into a relationship with you, especially not a business relationship with you, is because your re reputation is all you have. So let me build that trust. Let me see what you're doing. And honestly, what I do whenever I first meet someone who I know I really do want to have a relationship with, I calm down. Because, you know, I get, I, I, I get fangirl too, not often, but I can get fangirl too, especially for my favorite people in business. I'm like, oh my God, it's not so well. I gotta connect, I gotta connect. They gotta be my mentor, we gotta be besties. Calm down. Besties sometimes. They do. If they're kind of develop a bestie. So it's understanding that building a relationship when you go into any place, A, you don't have to get every person's card. You don't. Mm. Like do not walk into a room and try and get every single person's card in that room. You're doing too much. Calm down. It's okay. Relax. Relax in the fact that you know who you are, you know what you offer, and you know your worth. And be confident in that. That is the greatest attractor in anyone, male, female, business, personal, being confident and very resolute in who you are and what you do, knowing that one thing. And then understanding you have something of value to offer them too. It's not just, I want to take, 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 but I can also give, and this is what I can give. So anytime I initially look to build a relationship for me, and maybe just because that's how I was raised, it's always, well, how can I help you too? Sage yes, advice. I do. Sage advice. Yeah. I, I absolutely believe that's the first thing should be out of your mouth um, is what can I do for you? What do you need? Um, it yeah. takes people aback. If you, if you ever do that, I, I challenge people to try it. It, people like look at you crazy like uh, and they honestly some of them won't have an answer right away They're like I'm so used to people asking me for something. Wait a minute. Hold on mm -hmm. You know, so it's weird uh, and be and I think also be able to be willing if you really want that relationship to foster it Be willing to do, you know, the small stuff too. like everyone thinks it's got to be You know buy my book or sign up for this course or sometimes it's you know what? Hey, I know you've got this event You want me to come there early and help you set up? Yeah, you know. yeah, that is building a relationship. Right. That, that, it, it, it's just like when you're building a personal relationship. If you, let's say you meet a girl and you instantly know you want to marry her. If you tell her on that first day, she may or may not be terrified of you and never see you again. But if you <laughs> slow walk that process to where you make her comfortable, you show her that you care, you remember the little things, you remember her favorite color is blue. So you bring a blue teddy bear or something, you know, just yeah. to show little things to say, hey, you've got this event, you're in my city. Do you need, any, do you need me to bring anything to the hotel for you? because they don't have a car, you're in the same city. Or, hey, I noticed that you're doing a, I don't know, a takeover, a live takeover. Do you need me to come on to maybe ask questions or field questions to whoever you're doing the takeover with? It's being able to be of service and not always taking from them because the higher up they are, the more people they have pulling on them, whether it's family members, whether it's friends, the people in the office, they have a lot of things that are taking from them. So if you come in and you're not something that's taking from them, you become an asset to them, they want you around even more because it's like, well, there's a feeling that I get when I'm around this person and they're good for business. So I want more of that. But if you come in guns blazing, well, hey, you're in this position. Do you think you could introduce me to such and such? I don't know. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> and people break that rule every time. It seems silly because we're talking about it, but I get yeah. it all the time. Hey, I saw so-and-so on your show. Can you give me their phone number? I'm like, what? Yeah, like, are you trying to get me unfreezing? <laughs> what would I, why would I do that, you know, first of all? Anyway, we're, I digress. Um, I do want to go switch gears. And it's a little bit about what we talked about. It's kind of relationships, but this is something different. It hit me when you were saying something earlier, and I know a, a lot of people deal with this. So what, what, 
don't feel good. We're talking about branding. Mm-hmm. And, and you talked about putting things out there, good content, having a strategy. And we know image is certainly part of branding. Yeah. Um, a lot of times in the case like for you, you're great at, at branding. You have a great look. I mean, it just pieces together very well. Um, your fault photography is on point, your graphics, all of that. What if I'm that guy or girl that really is self-conscious? I don't have a good image mm-hmm. right now. You know, I'm just in that time of my life. Um, how do I get an image or do I replace myself with someone else? Cause everyone always says you're your best brand, right? Mm -hmm. But what if I'm not comfortable with being out there yet or now in the beginning, but I still need to get it done, the content, the strategy, the relationships, do I substitute myself for something else or someone else or do, or or how do I get through that part of the madness? So you first have to, Again, that whole confidence thing, people can feel when you're not. Um, So I always say if you don't feel good about you, whether it's personal or business, you really do have to work on that. Like that to me, that's when, again, you're building your foundation on sand because the higher you go and the higher you glow and the the higher you rise, more eyes will come on you. Yeah. And that's when you start to experience some real issues because you can't keep it going and you can't keep it up because your inside feels so bad. And this is not to get too spiritual or too whatever, um, but what's on the inside eventually comes out. And if, so I was working with a client and she started to get major, major press. Um, there were some amazing things happening, but then there were also, you kind of have the internet trolls and the people who, you know, have opinions. Everyone has one. It's like a butt. Everyone has one. Um, <laughs> So yeah. they started to, you know, kind of blast her on social media saying, well, I don't like this and I don't do this and I don't do that. To any normal person um, or to anyone who isn't as confident, it would have crushed them. But to her, because she's fully aware of who she is and what she is, um, she was like, okay, well, everyone's not going to like me. That's fine. Everyone is not my client. Everyone is not for me. So if you're uncomfortable with who you are, my first suggestion is to, you're going to have to get comfortable with who you are, how you look, what you wear, what works, what doesn't work. Get super comfortable with you because that level of confidence allows you to soar and grow even, even bigger. But now on the flip side of that, if you, if it's just seriously an issue for you and you really, really are an introvert and you have no desire to be on the outside, you can use a, a character. So you can have, I mean, you can get them have, you know, a designer or a developer draw one up, which is a cartoon type image of you or of what you want. And you can completely brand yourself like that. That is possible. I've seen it many times. And then you build the relationships as the person behind the brand. Mm. Yeah. So you can do that. Um, and I've seen it done really, really well. I know um, the six figure chick is the one who comes to mind. She has this adorable uh, character, caricature that she uses um, on a lot of her branding. I think she's really, really amazing with what she's done because many people don't do it, but I love the way she's done it. You still see her and you can still tell she is very confident in who she is and what she does, but she also has a character that she's now branding as, you know, this is the, the leader of my brand. And then there's also, you can decide that you want a brand ambassador. And then mm. you do the business part. And then the other person who's the brand ambassador, you make sure they're well-versed on who the business is, what the business does, and you can do that. Because every brand doesn't have to have a face necessarily. Like Target doesn't have a face. And I have, you have no idea who that, who that person is behind Target unless, okay, you're in that industry. So you don't have to have a face on your brand. It can be you know, a brand ambassador, whether it's a physical one, an actual person, or a character. And yet you still can have the identity because people don't get Target and Walmart mixed to get mixed up. They are not at all. You feel the difference when you walk in. There's a huge difference from the number of people at the register to how people in <laughs> It is huge difference. Good point. Good point. I never thought about that one. Um, so I want to go into because uh, I do have, believe it or not, uh, some millennials that follow us. Uh, and I'm not going to assume, but are you a millennial? Yeah, I'm 30. I just look young, but I'm 30. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. I knew because, so you know, it's a, it's people don't understand uh, how Generation X goes well into the mid 80s. So I didn't want to assume oh, yeah, no uh, you, that, that you weren't in that genre. But anyway, you 
you definitely work with millennials on leadership mm -hmm. um, development. Yeah. So I, first thing I want to jump into, biggest question and biggest argument my generation always says is millennials do not have social skills. <laughs> now, I don't yeah. know, if, you know, of course, the baby boomer said, God awful things about us <laughs> that we didn't think was true. So everyone does that, right? It's just a natural mm -hmm. thing. When you yeah. gain some sort of wisdom, you swear you're the only one that has it. Yes. Um, <laughs> but there is a difference in the way that millennials do socialize. Yes, huge. Um, can you still be effective in the landscape of what you just described, the three-part process, as a millennial, or do they have to look at things a different way? So I think one of the greatest things about millennials is, is we will flex in an instant. If it doesn't make sense going right, we will instantly go left because, okay, that doesn't make sense. Um, it can be a little bit harder for the generations before us to flex because honestly, there weren't as many options. If you didn't like something, you just had to deal with it because that's what it was. Okay. You got to tell me what flex means. <laughs> So flex is just the abbreviated version of flexible. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. All right. So, I knew that. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. So yeah, no, millennials, we, we flex quite well. If it doesn't work for us, we're not willing to stay in it. We will quickly chuck the deuces, tell you goodbye. It was fun. Thanks for the lessons. Gotta go. Be it good, bad, or ugly. That's just how we are. To call it our parents spoiled us too much and gave us too much love, affection, and attention. Call it whatever you want. But we're just not saying where it doesn't work for us. That's just how it is. And that can be frustrating, especially for, you know, um, our, our more experienced um, counterparts. Because in their mind, it's just, no, you, you stick through it. You stay there. You, you, you act like you love it, even if you don't. Right. We're like, could have had a V8. Next item on the agenda. Right. So, do I feel it is possible for, um, do I feel if it's possible for millennials to build relationships as millennials? Yes, if you understand that A, everyone doesn't have to adjust to your desires, just like you don't have to adjust to everyone else's. Um, they don't have to be accommodating to you. Depending on where you're trying to grow, and this is where that having a high EQ comes in because you're able to go into an arena feel using your intuition, your common sense and everything else, feel out the landscape, feel out the terrain to understand, okay, for this particular person, I am going to have to call. And anyone who knows me knows I hate the telephone. I do. Okay. It is my arch nemesis. I hate talking on the phone. We can text every day sometimes, but that actually getting on the phone to call, dear God, I hate it. But I do understand that for some relationships that I have with some of my more experienced mentors um, and, and people who I want to, you know, continue to create relationships with, it matters to them if I call. And so I suck it up and I call. And it's not that there is a terrible conversation. It's a great conversation. Right. It's just, I don't like the phone. And most millennials don't. We just, you know, it's not our thing. Right. We like the phone for social media, but not like the phone for calling. Like, are you sure you couldn't have text me that to ask me? <laughs> <laughs> so it's just understanding um, and getting a good, a good idea of, okay, this is the arena I'm in. Will what I currently do work for me? So if every millennial can just, you know, kind of take that, you can be exactly who you are, but understand you will have to flex and adjust if and when necessary, depending on the person because everyone doesn't have to adjust to you. They just don't. Um, sticking with the, the, the theme of being a millennial in business, what are some of the tough, toughest parts when training or developing a millennial in the grand scheme of a business concept? Are there, you know, there's, I can think of a billion um, strength. Uh, I think, as you said, being flexible and being able, that's something that, it, you know, I have to like beat my head against the wall. Oh, okay. Don't go this way. Right. That doesn't work. Um, I finally get it after a concussion. Uh, yeah. Millennials have that ability, as you said, but they also have the technology uh, or awareness of that and, be, and to be able to see something new on the market that is, that can help them and instantly know how it works, how I'm going to use it, 
Whereas I'm sitting around like, oh, Jesus, something mm-hmm. else. And, and, you know, it takes I, I finally accept it three years later. And after all, my competition has already used it against me. So I, I know those things are great. But what are some of the weaknesses that you see that you have to kind of coach up or develop up to make sure that they're successful? Not that they're like me, but they're like they're successful in what they want to do. Yeah. Um, so I really do. Um, I really do feel that's one of the, the greatest assets of having a millennial on, on your team. No mm. matter who you are, I really do think that everyone should always have a, a millennial on the team. And then you kind of want to get a, you know, a Gen Z or on the team, too, because they're completely different from millennials. I mean, completely different in that I feel like a lot of maybe millennial parents, you know, maybe raise them or, you know, the last of the early, early millennial parents, you know, kind of raise them to think of others first. For millennials, I'm not going to lie, we think of ourselves first many times. Um, with your Gen Zers, those who are, you know, after me, um, my daughter's generation, um, they think of others first because that's how we're teaching them to be more communal, to understand the world is not what you see right outside your door. Um, but having a millennial on your team, you get a vast um, uh opportunity and access to creativity because we can create with our eyes closed. We create in our sleep. We're envisioning of how can this be different? How can this be better? How can I get this quicker? Because we like things like this, like yeah. this, like uh, you don't got it yet. Well, why not? I just asked you five <laughs> seconds ago. Why don't you have it already? Um, yeah. So because of that, um, that can be something that can help push whatever the brand purpose goal, that can be something that can push it further along. Um, but what many times happens is, is because the more experienced generation, they get so frustrated with how quickly millennials move. They try and hamper them down to say, OK, well, let me know every step you're taking before you take that. Step. And that is the easiest way to frustrate and get your millennial to quit on you what you want to do and how you get a millennial to work for you and to be team you all the way is make them feel as though they are a leader in whatever business unit they have. I don't care if they are the secretary, make them feel as though they are a leader in the secretarial um, position, lead secretary of all the secretaries in the office. It is to make them feel as though they're a leader as if their voice counts. Ask them for their opinion. That is how you get a millennial to be team you, to get on board. Um, Give them jobs and give them requirements to where, okay, these are the set of things that you have to have done for the week. I'm not going to check in with you every every day to see if you've done it, but it's due by Thursday. I gave it to you Monday. It's due by Thursday. And give them a little bit at a time so that they can see that, okay, A, you trust me because that's huge for us. We want to know that you trust me to deliver on what I said I'm going to do. And B, you're creating a leader in me. You're teaching me how to grow. You're making it so that even if this is not my last stop, I can take something from this job. Growth for us is huge. So that's how you create a leader, you know, as a millennial. That's how you get them to work for you. I recently learned that the hard way, I wasn't, you know, I'm not going to say I'm smart enough to have figured it out, but I was um, to see that the person who I'm speaking about um, could never, even in a thousand years, see, right? You know, um, and, and so I just, I did exactly what you said. I said, listen, don't ask me anything. You run that, how you yep. see it fit. You want it to be purple. It's purple. You know, I don't care. Just do you. Mm-hmm. And they took something that was on our station. That was something that no one paid attention to. And they made it something that people were like, Hey, who's the girl that does that? You know, like, when are you going to do that again? Or can she do that for me? And it was like, wow, you know? And I wouldn't have thought of it. I honestly would not have thought of what she did. And I agree with you. Now, uh, you just reminded me of something, and I hope people are paying attention to this. I, you know, I need to get better at that because I am sort of, you know, everybody around me is like old. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's a problem. So I got to do better at um, mixing the two together and being comfortable with that and making them comfortable within the organization. So that is take it slow. Like you don't have to give them, you know, the crown on day (laughs) two. Again, it's just like building a relationship. Go slow and trust them with things that if they break it, you won't cry. It won't ruin the whole company. Little things at first to see how they do. 
treat them like a toddler. Toddlers have to crawl before they walk. They have to walk before they run. Treat it like that. But if you give them stuff like that, it is so, it's innate in us. We have to grow. We have to see progress. It has to keep moving along. If we don't see that, if we can't, we're, we're out. Like next, that's where that flex is kind of bad things. We're like, okay, next item mm. on the agenda. <laughs> So my last question, and I, I'm loving this interview, and I know people are going to listen to the playback at nauseum. So my last thing is I want to touch about PR, mm -hmm. right? Um, to me, I could be wrong, but the old PR companies, uh, unless you're a Fortune 500 company, the old PR brand of I can get you on the radio station and maybe one magazine, you know, those days are starting to dry up. Yeah. Um, do you believe that people can be if 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 they do things like Google, they do things like hire someone like you to get them, uh, you know, as you talked about having a, a plan, a system, uh, some direction on where they need to go, where they want to go, kind of reverse engineering. Mm -hmm. um, can they be their own PR? Definitely. I mean, absolutely. Um, even I started to shift my business model to where I took it out of my offerings because I'm like, you know what? Granted, there are some doors that you need people who are already behind the curtain to usher you in. But that's once you get to a certain point to where, okay, I can't take myself any further. I now need someone who this is their profession. This is what they do. This is their focus. This is them. But in the beginning, what you can always do is, so I'm a professional stalker. Don't judge me. It doesn't flow well. It doesn't flow over into my personal life at all. Okay. Anyone who's tried to date me, I'm so anti. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm a professional stalker in that when I want to connect with someone, whether it's um, in entertainment, whether they're a writer, whatever it is, I Google them to see, okay, what are their social media networks? I'll follow them on those networks. I'll interact with them for a while. I'll make sure my content, again, my content is so on point um, that they're checking me out, they're liking my stuff, they're interacting with my stuff, and I'll build the relationship from there. And again, Lisa Nichols said it best, success makes noise. Sure. So do what you do really, really well, but make sure that you've Googled and you've researched You know those people who you want to cover you if you want to be in Forbes. Google to find out who are some of the writers for Forbes. Follow them on their Instagram. Like their pics, comment, hey girl, hey, what's going on? Oh, I love this look. You look great in this. Where'd you get those shoes? And it's not being fake because I really do want to know where did you get those shoes? I want them too. Right. Um, but it's, it's building a, a virtual relationship. And because everything, you know, social media is so prevalent now, people really do feel as though they know you um, from social media. And you can build, I've built one of my best friends now, we built our relationship from social media. Mm -hmm. We started on social media. I saw her in a swimsuit. I love the swimsuit. So I purchased it from her. I told her one day we're going to work together and we became friends from there. So if you're going to be your own PR, you need to first, again, have a strategy, have a plan of, okay, I want to be in, for just off the top of my head, Essence, Black Enterprise, HuffPost, and Cosmo Magazine. You can research, again, Google bestie go to your bestie google <laughs> and google who are some of the writers for them you can go on their website and type in certain keywords and articles will come up and you can see who were the writers for those articles they always i have yet to see um where they don't have some one at least one of their social media networks on you know under their article Right. Click on that and follow them. Start to interact with them. Understand they may not follow you back immediately. That's okay. Remember, it is not a race. It is a marathon. Take your time. If you do it from that angle, what you're doing, especially if you're clear on your content and you're clear on your strategy and your marketing plan, they'll start to then look at, well, what are you doing? You know, well, can I talk to you? Can, can I interview you? I want to write an article. I'm doing an article. I want to include you in it. Becoming um, members of groups, you know, on Facebook for people who are in your arena or who are, you know, in marketing and PR. If you start to do it like that, then you absolutely can become your own PR person, but you have to be strategic about it. And if you don't have the time, totally fine too. hire someone who, who does and who's skilled. Like a millennial. 
<laughs> yeah, create. <laughs> but make sure they have relationships though, because right. it can be super difficult, um, especially if let's say your brand is something that's new or it's something where people aren't as clear on what it is that you offer. It can be super difficult. And I say super with a capital S, super difficult for no matter how talented that PR person is to get you press. So being very, very clear, and that's the most important thing. If you're going to be your own PR, even if you're going to hire PR, be very, very clear on what it is that you offer so that people aren't confused. Because if they're confused, it's going to be that much harder to get you press. Wow. Thank you so much for putting a period on, on yet another nugget. Uh, do you have any events uh, or anything like that coming up, if you have any um, workshops, seminars, symposiums, anything, let everybody know about that. Well, I actually just came out with my first ebook. Um, it's in preparation for the physical book. Um, it's called And I Start Where. And it basically is a lot of people always ask me, well, how do I get started? How did you get started? Um, and I tell them, you know what? It's, it's too difficult to keep repeating this thing over and over and over. <laughs> I'm going to create an ebook. Um, so I created an ebook and it's, it's only $10. Um, it's on my website, uh, alishareese.com. And my name, my parents got excited. It's A L E C H I A, last name Reese, R E E S E. So alishareese.com. You can go on there. Uh, the code to get it for $10 is start five. And it takes $5 off, so it's $10. And it literally is, it's just, it's a blueprint to show you how you get started. Um, it shows you how you build relationships, how you identify memberships that you need to be a part of, because membership has its benefits. Um, and when you're starting out, you, you need those. Um, it helps you remember that, you know, life is a relationship game to win. You, you better learn to play it well. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the, the book we have coming out. And then, you know, for any other events that we have coming up, you can always just check my social media, Alicia Reese, on everything. Yeah, there you go. Consistency. Uh, what was that, that code again? It's start five. So start five. Okay. Yeah, S T A R T five. The number five. Perfect. And by the way, I advise everybody to get it. Your story. I'm actually going to get it. Um, your story is so remarkable. Um, you know, because people see you now, and <laughs> they they probably envision, oh, she's just you know, she just woke up like that, as some, as a famous singer says. And it's so easy. She hasn't been through anything, and you've really overcome a lot of obstacles over your life and and i'm sure you know we don't ever stop overcoming them but um thank you for being transparent with your journey i'm sure it helps others younger as well as older than you to realize that it is truly a marathon it's not something you can win overnight yeah very true very true and thank you for having me i always love doing interviews with you because you come up with some of the most interesting <laughs> questions that challenge me to think a little harder so i love it very good. That's my nosiness in me. So thank you, Miss hey, Reese. You're for being, uh, oh, yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> so we appreciate you and uh, come back anytime and we'll make sure we'll, we'll get all this back out to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, Alicia Reese, everybody. We'll see you next time. Again, so, uh, Taking Back Your Life 2017. Keep in mind, go to, our, go to my website at clarkgarrison.com. Like Miss Reese, my parents got a little happy. K L A R Q U E. Dot com. It's not the normal. All right. So go there and you'll see our entire lineup. You'll see this replay. And uh, we've got some specials out there for you. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.